I've been through a lot in my life. Um, I've peeled back a lot of different layers of my life um, in terms to get to where I am today. Even to get in front of a camera, <laughs> you know, it's taken me a long time to be brave enough to do that and to do even what I'm doing right now. So I commend myself for that because it's just one more layer that I've been able to kind of peel back and say, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm ready to share my story. I'm ready to share, share my work even more. I'm ready to get out there and, you know, uh, have people experience it on different levels, you know. Um, why not? You know, I'm, I'm at a place where I, uh, I'm just at that place where I'm ready to because I've worked on it many, many years of working on myself and getting to that place in every level of my life to peel back all those different layers and, and become who I am. That's what Eden is about. That's what Eden is about. Yeah. That's what Eden is about. It's about taking somebody who is very fragile and shy and wounded and hurt and through the course of many years transforming into who she is meant to be. That's why in that pa particular painting I have, you know, a, a zero <laughs> right mm -hmm. in the middle of the horse and um, right in its belly because the belly, the, the gut, everything that inside wow. is what, where everything starts and kind of comes from there. And that painting was evolved over many layers and those layers were taken off and put back on into new ways. And that's what I do with paintings and that particular painting, but a lot of other paintings too. A lot of them, that's how I paint. And I think the way I paint, my style, the way I paint is reflective of who I am and what I've been through and where I'm going and who I've become. I was sitting behind a desk and I had no idea. I just had a dream that I wanted to do this. But I had no idea years later that not only I would be um, doing this for a living, but creating these amazing pieces and meeting these amazing people and connecting the way I do with them. Tell me about it's that, really special. that beginning. You said sitting behind a desk. Mm. What mm -hmm. desk? What was it? Right, yeah. Uh, what I were mean, you doing? I guess not everybody knows my yeah. background and history or whatever. What were you doing before all this? And how did you so, all this? yeah, for a very long time, um, for my job, I was a you know, glorified secretary, basically, sat in a cubicle administrative assistant, as they call them. Um, and I supported a um, national accounts team that sold records to, you know, different accounts in Nashville when we lived in Nashville. And I also did desk work in California prior to us moving, you know, to the south. And and then uh, I studied music and I was an, an oboist. So I was always creative, but... Uh, playing the oboe isn't, I don't know, it isn't so much creative. It's very much a very um, expressive more than creativity. Creativity is something that comes from nothing to me. Expression is already something that's made, like a piece of music that Mozart's created, and we play it and express it in the way we do. You know? And you work hard at playing scales and practicing and stuff, but that wasn't fulfilling the creativity part of me. But it, it was something that was supposed to, I think it was meant to be in order to get, because when I paint, I'm very musical with it. I feel those kind of feelings and expressions that I did when I was playing, but um, so, yeah, so it's just, it was just something that was probably meant to be along the way. So you were at this behind this desk. Yeah. So getting back to the desk. Yeah, part. back to the cubicle, which <laughs> is such a corporate setting. Yeah, you. so unlike me, so in me. <laughs> and I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> back then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Horrible at filing. <laughs> so, 
horrible. So how did you become someone behind a cubicle and to someone who is the furthest thing from your cu cubicle? I mean, mm -hmm. well, how did you become an artist, <laughs> I guess? Here's my thought on that. I was not a very confident person back then in my abilities. Confident? Yeah, mm -hmm. just wasn't. I had a dreams, I had dreams, and I had things I wanted to do creatively, but just didn't have the confidence to go for it. So I, um, I said, you know, I needed to work and I needed a job, so I took work at a creative company, which I thought was fun, and that was um, a record company in Nashville, and it was fun. and. I surrendered myself to that. I remember one day just making a deal with God, saying, well, if this is all you have for me, I'm going to sit in this chair and be grateful that I have a job where I get to like wear jeans and I have nice people and great friends and we get to hear music and listen to it and sell records and, you know, that, that's it. So um, uh, it wasn't enough for me, but I kind of surrendered to it. And I, I've learned along the way that sometimes when you surrender to things, that you are, that there's a part of you, you know, that you just kind of make a deal with yourself and say, okay, this is it, I'm okay, you know. And I, I remember giving that to God specifically and saying, if you want me to have a creative career, you are going to do it because it's not going to be from me. Hmm. And, uh, and it's interesting because in those years that I sat in that cube, I slowly got exposed to different avenues of being an artist. I saw artists getting their artwork on record covers. Oh, you mean other painters? Yeah, like right. painters. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought, oh, that's neat. I never seen that, you know, never. That's kind of cool, you know. Or I saw artists getting their artwork in books and greeting cards. And so this whole world was sort of unraveling in front of me. And I thought of possibilities. And then I saw, uh, there was a friend of mine, cube mate kind of next to me. She was uh, an administrative assistant to one of the VPs there. And she was taking an art class, and she'd bring in her works and um, show me. And I got really inspired by it. I was like, God, I remember you used, I used to do art when I was a kid. And that was at the beginning, you know, when I was a kid, I used to draw, paint. You know, I was a self-taught, you know, I self-taught myself when I was a kid even. But I, I gave it up for music. And then, um, but then when I saw her painting, I was like, man, I'd love to try that, you know. So I bought up some supplies and some canvases or in, in some, you know, um, sketchbooks and stuff and just started playing around and slowly started showing my work at this little cube. I'd kind of bring in my artwork and start to show people and, and, you know, some people would say, oh, you should talk to so-and-so. You're really good, you know. Right. So I, I built confidence from doing. I built confidence from showing people. And slowly, you know, it kind of got out there. And then I started, you know, putting my artwork and talking to the right people and putting my artwork on greeting cards and CD covers and records and books. Um, and your, some of your books. stuff wound up on CD covers, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun and really a confidence builder. Yeah. yeah. Totally. But. Um, and then you got a, a um, licensing agreement for a yeah. major greeting card company. Major greeting card company, Recycle Greetings in Chicago. And then, and then you got into uh -huh. some books you were illustrating. You yep, some, with Thomas Nelson. Right. I did, that's a pretty big publisher in Nashville. Yeah, they, yeah, they hired me to do books. And uh, I was doing more illustrative work, but it was still something that led to what I was doing today. Right, right. And you sure. did this all as a self-taught artist. Yeah, very all self-taught. Yeah, all self-taught. Just you know, maybe it takes a little longer to get there, but 
I learned a lot along the way too. And, um, and I learned mainly to use my intuition and gut. which is so important in my work now. It's what leads me to my next moves, my, it leads me to where I need to be. I'm, it's just an intuitive thing I, I just tap into. And I just, composition-wise, everything. And I think that's what people, when the viewer sees my work, they think that's what helps them feel it. They're not critical of it, you know, in, right. in an art, you know, high art or whatever sense, they're, they just love it, mm. you know? There's something about it. And they need to have it. To use your intuition yeah. as a self-taught artist, that, that sounds a, like a courageous thing to do. Mm -hmm. Because as a trained oboe player, someone showed you, if you do this, this mm -hmm. is what happens. Mm -hmm. No one showed you this mm -mm. and had evidence to say that this is how the response will be. You had to go mm -hmm. out. I did it. I worked hard at it. I worked hard every night at it. I remember just practicing and doing, learning, you know, and it really was even before YouTube videos were out. Right. I just tapped into my, you know, gift that I had for wielding a brush and a pen and pencil and matched it with a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. But I loved it. It wasn't like work that I hated. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I would go home every night and love to be it. It was, of course, before we had um, Noah, too, our child, our son. Yeah. Our son. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had time. And that, uh, that's a risky, courageous thing to do. To, and you were talking mm -hmm. about courage and, Mm -hmm. and had to build confidence. Mm -hmm. So for you to do this and finally show even people in the office mm -hmm. that you were working with, mm -hmm. that must have been like, wow. Yeah. Um, this is, I can be confident in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the confidence grew and grew. Just confidence comes by doing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, just a simple motto that I've had. That it just comes from doing and then putting yourself out there and seeing how the world responds to it and the world responded to it. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. you just have to do it, uh, you know. And that feels... And I still have to do that. I'm yeah. not, it, it hasn't stopped. I do it. I still have to do that, but in broader scopes now. Not so much just safe with my friends. Yeah, you're on a much, much <laughs> bigger stage now with yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a... I've been on television. Yeah, there's a lot of people I've... looking at you, <laughs> and, you know, knowing who you are and learning about you and yeah. collecting you now. And that's a big, big stage yeah. than the desk. Yeah. There was a point in time where I, I couldn't even think about it, you know, as you managed certain aspects of the business mm -hmm. that there was a point where I really couldn't even think about it in terms of like really yeah I just I had to knew I just had to put my head down and paint hmm. that was my job at one point now it's a little it feels it's a little different now yeah. but yeah. back back for a long time it was like when that. you start to make that shift to yeah. the bigger stage you didn't want to think about it because it was just overwhelming? Yeah, it was a little overwhelming, yeah, at first, you know, to think about, you know, wow, we're making making our, you know, mortgage with, you know, yeah, payments right. with my artwork. That was just, I didn't even think that that could ever be possible, yeah, right. you know, right. or buying groceries or whatever, yeah. you know, um, to have a house and things like that. So, um but it's just, especially this year, has proven that I was 
even more so proven that this is what I was meant to be doing this year for this time. Yeah. This year. I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's that like to have that moment in front of you? I think it's God ordained. Mm-hmm. I really do. I really think it's the two worlds meeting up mm-hmm. for that moment. I believe that that is a truth. And you know, I, I believe it's, it's a divine thing that God gave me this gift to paint. But not only painting to, you know, um, be, you know, have financial gain from it, but it, that, yeah, that's nice. I'm so happy I get to paint for a living. That's my job. But it goes way beyond that in terms of like people come first to me my collectors come first and their feelings and what they want and what they want out of it and I can when I not ever it doesn't happen all the time but when it happens it's truly a I think a divine moment in time yeah did you ever think as you were putting yourself together in life, like mm-hmm. we all do, mm-hmm. have stuff and we have to build it and reshape it and put it together. Mm-hmm. That once it got to this point, did you ever think it would be exposed or shared or connected with so many people out there? <laughs> no. Or did you just think, <laughs> um, just quietly do this. Yeah, it was more about quiet, quietly doing this, quietly working, quietly being in my studio or a bedroom or wherever I started in the beginning, mm-hmm. in garages, <laughs> all these glamorous places. Yeah. <laughs> my spare, the spare bedrooms. Right. Um, no, very quietly, slowly progressing towards where I was eventually down the road in the future meeting up with particular people along the way that connected with my art in a special way Mm -hmm. and almost as if I painted the painting for them Mm -hmm. that is an incredible moment that's an incredible moment that is a moment that not only confirms what I was supposed to be doing in life after all these years, you know. And you know where I've been, you know, being married and knowing you for so long and, um, you know, sitting behind a desk. And I had no idea. I just had a dream. Thank you.